Okay, okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, once again. Uh, this is the second session. We had our first session yesterday. Um, so we'll continue uh, from where we left off, right? Because yesterday we covered uh, some ground in terms of just a recap on um, on, uh, on on inflation and how it affects economies and how we actually get uh, to the decision of, 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 of whether if a central bank is hiking interest rates, what is the reason behind that? What are they trying to achieve? What is the main objective, right? So if we have that understanding, then it makes things easier as we move forward to see if whether is the central bank uh, failing or are they uh, achieving whatever they set out to achieve, right? If let's say if inflation is high or in a high inflationary environment or in a low inflationary environment, whether that be deflation, right? So that is what uh, we covered yesterday. And like I said, we'll continue from there, right? So uh, just let me know uh, whether in the comments or um, in the comments or sorry, not necessarily in the comments, but in the chat, or maybe just unmute yourself and let me know if my audio is clear, you can hear me. Uh, there's no uh, interruption in my audio. You can even type just yes or why in the chat. Hello. Yes. Yeah, your audio is very clear. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, so I will continue uh, because we had some response, which means that things are good on my end, right? So yesterday we covered inflation, high inflationary, high inflation environment and low inflationary inflation environment and why the central bank needs to hike interest rates because they're trying to tame demand, right? Uh, how is demand produced or how is uh, demand side inflation produced? Uh, we also went through that, that if the economy is growing and booming, then it creates more jobs. Uh, then businesses are also growing and it creates more jobs. And then pe more people have uh, disposable income or they're earning a salary and then they can afford to buy or to purchase goods and services. And that results in an increase in the demand of goods and services. And then, of course, it ultimately produces inflation, right? Because businesses also raise their prices uh, to capitalize on the demand of goods and services. Because if demand is high, basic economics then good then then the price goes higher and vice versa if, if supply is high then prices go lower right so that is with the case when the inflation is low then the, the central bank or the government they try and stimulate the economy uh by what by increasing supply of money or of the currency in the form of whether by um quantitative easing, which is purchasing of bonds. And in that case, they're injecting more cash reserves to the banks, and then the banks can lend out that money. And in, like I said, increases supply. So it results in what? In lower prices and by prices. Uh, we mean that the strength of the currency, so it will weaken the currency and that will essentially be inflation. And that will shift, hopefully shift inflation towards the 2% target, right? So, and then we also touched on fiscal policy uh, in terms of the government intervention. They can then when it comes to fiscal policy, uh, it's either government spending or taxes. So they either raise taxes or cut taxes. They either increase government spending or reduce government spending, right? So all these things contribute to inflation, right? In one way or, or, or the other. So now with that understanding, we now go to the fact that, okay, most central banks have been hiking interest rates, right? So we understood, okay, they've been hiking interest rates and the objective has been to tame high inflation. And we are de we are currently seeing disinflation, uh, which is essentially inflation slowing down. But what is contributing to inflation, right? right? Like, or what are the contributory factors of inflation? Some of them, we highlighted them yesterday, like I've, like I've just explained. So, uh, disposable income, spending, unemployment, sorry, employment, employed persons, is that going up? Are more people getting more jobs and all of that? Because if that is still going up, and as much as we're seeing a, 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 a slowdown in inflation, but if all those factors are also going up, the economy is still growing stronger from strength to strength, then that means that the demand is not yet dying, right? 
So that might be just a temporary slowdown in inflation before we see inflation picking up again. So that is where we'll be heading uh, in today's session, right? So I just wanted to give that quick uh, recap of what we covered yesterday before I move over or move on uh, to what we have on the agenda for today, right? So essentially now armed with what we covered yesterday, you can then now go to, uh, you can then now go to maybe like uh, trading economics. And then if you obviously don't have your spreadsheet and, uh, and it's not like you necessarily need a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, but if you don't, you can just go on to trading economics uh, and also even go into the actual uh, specific central banks, right? So let's open trading economics on one end, uh, while on the other end, uh, we actually, um, While on the other end, we actually go to a central bank, right? So let's let's start with the Fed. Let's start with the Fed, right? With the Federal Reserve, and then we get to we get to um, we get to actually uh, understand their monetary policy, and then we can we can we can get to have an idea of what their objective is, right? So. Uh, okay, let's go to, this is the statement, right? Yeah, so let's go to their latest statement. So recent indications uh, point to modest growth in spending and production, right? Uh, job gains have been robust in recent months and the unemployment rate has, be, has remained low. Inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. Then of course they speak about the Russian war against Ukraine. And then the committee is highly attentive to inflation risks. The committee seeks to achieve maximum employment and inflation at the rate of 2% over the longer run. In support of these goals, uh, the committee decided to raise the target range for the Fed funds uh, to 4.75%. Uh, the committee anticipates the ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. In determining the extent of future increases in the target range, the committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with which monetary policy affects uh, economic activity and inflation and economic and financial developments. In addition, the, economy, the committee will continue reducing its holding, holdings of treasury securities and agency debt and agency uh, mortgage-backed securities as described in its previously announced plan. So that, that is referring to what? quantitative tightening of which we also covered yesterday. So the committee is strongly committed to returning inflation to its 2% objective. In assessing the appropriate stance of monetary policy, the committee will continue to monitor the implications of incoming information from for the economic outlook. The committee would be prepared to adjust the stance of monetary policy as appropriate if risks emerge that could impede the attainment of the committee's goals. The committee uh, committee's assessment will take into account a wide range of information, including readings on labor market conditions, inflation pressures, and inflation expectations, and financial and international development. So now, if you read that, it should make sense. I don't know. Maybe maybe it doesn't for everyone. Just let me know if if if, if what I've just the statement that I've just read is confusing to anyone. It's not pretty straightforward what they're saying. Taking into account what we what we covered yesterday. Just let me know if it's not clear for anyone. You can unmute yourself uh, and, and just let me know if it's unclear for you. Hello? Yep. Yeah, I wanna ask, uh, I wanna ask a question regarding the, I don't know if I can say that the paragraph we, in the end, it's saying the committee is strongly committed to returning inflation to its 2% objective, mm -hmm. right? My question is, yesterday you said uh, central banks are actually comfortable with the, their currency losing value of 2% at least per day. Um, per, per, per year, per year. Or it's per year, not per day. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, that would be, <laughs> that would be a lot. Oh, okay, so, um, and you also said this keeps the the currency competitive from the business perspective, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So my question is, uh, other than the Fed, is there any other central bank that is that two percent objective? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. No, we, we we will touch on other central banks uh, most definitely, uh, but it varies from central bank to central bank. Here in South Africa, the South African Reserve Bank, the target is three to six percent. No, right. So it varies uh, with, with central bank, but most developed economies, uh, their central banks, their target is around 2%, 2 to 3%, right? So it varies from central bank to central bank. All right. Yeah. So I'll take it as if uh, we all understand this, uh, this statement, right? So now this is the good thing about it. We're getting it from the central bank and we understand that central bank are mandated to maintain price stability, which is uh, inflation, keep moderate inflation moderately in check, and also to maintain uh, modest growth or steady growth in the economy, right? So now, if we're reading the statement from the central bank, we understand that their main objective or their goal is, of course, to keep employment or to achieve maximum employment and at the same time return inflation to 2% over the longer run. Now, we did a, 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 a lesson on inflation yesterday. So we now understand, okay, if they want to in return inflation back to 2%, what needs to happen? Of which they do tell us uh, in, in, in as well in writing here that uh, they will be looking at the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with which uh, monetary policy affects economic activity, inflation, and economic and financial development, right? So essentially they're telling us demand right of which we spoke about that they'll be looking at demand which is economic activity like i said whenever they're hiking interest rates they're trying to cool or slow down the economic activity whenever they're cutting interest rates or buying bonds in the form of quantitative easing they're trying to stimulate economic activity so in this case we now go back to what we learned yesterday and we're like okay this is what they are trying to achieve is the market uh or is there signs that they are heading in that direction right so now we can with the understanding from the central bank it's not something that we're guessing out of our, our, our out of out of nothing we can now go into for example trading economics and then we go under forecast we go to countries and then we can look at the united states and then like I, I said yesterday, I'll try and be as basic as possible, right? Uh, I'll try and be as basic and try to simplify this as much as possible. So if if it's not advanced for you, just understand the aim is not for it to be advanced. It's just for it to be basic and to just just connect the dots. So we then go to our, on the, okay, now we have an understanding that they're trying to reduce or cool or slow down economic activity. So what would it take for economic activity to slow down? We want to see growth slowing down. So GDP, we need to see GDP slowing down, number one. Number two, uh, number two, we need to see from the consumer side because we understand what really produces inflation. It's the, in this case, looking at the demand side, which is the demand of goods and services. So which means economy, uh, sorry, not economies, but consumers, we need to see consumers taking a hit. Right. So whether that be consumer spending, consumer disposable income, we need to see those things depreciating as well. And that will also give us a sign that there is what there is a or demand is currently taking a hit. Right. And there is the market is feeling the effect or the economy is feeling the effects of what of the Fed actually hiking interest rates. So let us look at all those factors. Uh, so firstly, starting off, we look at GDP. Uh, Looking at GDP, we can see that in, or from a quarterly basis, we saw that in the last two quarters of 2022, GDP was showed strengthening, right? So it's strengthened, right? So, okay, that's good. That is what we have. It's a lagging indicator, but it's showing that there is some sort of strength in the economy. Yes, it slowed from 3.2 to 2.9, but in the first two quarters of, of 2022, it was negative, right? And that is when the what? That is when the central bank had already started hiking interest rates. But like I said, it's a lagging indicator and maybe the, the, the effects of the actual uh, interest rates have not been passed through to GDP yet. But from what we have, we can see that the economy is, quite, is still in a good shape. That is with regards to the economy. And then if we go into something like inflation, 
of which we 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 we, we can we we can understand that if we go on to uh, prices, looking at core inflation, or let us look at PCE, which is what the Fed primarily focus on. So core PCE. Um, so let us look at core PCE, right? And let us see. So, no, call PCE. That's okay, let's go, let's go to core inflation rate. Just, uh, we can see that clearly it is slowing down, right? Inflation rate is currently slowing down. Core inflation rate is also slowing down and that is the deflationary, not deflation, disinflationary environment but then with inflation slowing down we also need to be seeing effects visible on what on the health of the economy as well that the health of the economy is also slowing down or economic activity so then we can also go into what go into the labor right because we understood that if demand is being killed then unemployment should be going up because for demand to die down consumers need to feel the pain consumers disposable income needs to drop uh, consumer spending needs to drop. And that is what the central bank is trying to achieve by hiking interest rates. So if we look at unemployment rate, we understand that the unemployment rate is currently low for the dollar. So if we look at unemployment rate, we can see that it has been decreasing, which means that the labor market is quite strong. And then if we go dive even deeper, we look at the unemployed persons and the employed persons, right? So unemployed persons, let us look at unemployed persons. We can see that it has also been decreasing, right? So the number of unemployed persons in the United States is decreasing, right? Of which that should be increasing for us, for it to show that, okay, less and less people are getting a salary to afford goods and services, right? So yeah, since this is, this is pretty much for last year, for the whole year, right? And you can see that it has been decreasing, right? And then let us look at uh, employed persons. Uh, let us look at employed persons. We can see that employed persons has been going up. So there is a disconnect now because if, if we, from a basic standpoint like yesterday, we need to say unemployment going up for demand to go down so that the demand of goods and services will eventually subside and then inflation will eventually follow suit. But we're not getting that from the labor market. So what is that telling us? The labor market is still strong and we could potentially see, uh, we could potentially see inflation resuming again and, and, and stabilizing, right? We might see this disinflationary environment that we're currently observing, it might come to a halt because even though GDP is lagging, but it's also not showing signs of weakness at the moment, right? And then if you come onto the labor market, which the consumers, as well as businesses, of course, are the producers of, 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 of the demand of goods and services, we can see that demand, the, the, the labor market is also strong. Unemployed persons is going down, employed persons is going up, unemployment rate is going, is going, is going uh, down as well, right? And then we look at, okay, let us look at the actual consumers. Let us look at consumer confidence, right? Because that gives us uh, an idea from the consumers, from the consumer standpoint, right? From the consumer side of things. So let us look at consumer confidence. We can see that consumer confidence has been rising. It decreased in the first half of 2022. And then from there, we'd say it stabilized and now it has been surprising to the upside. It's a survey, yes, of course, there might be some discrepancies here and there, but then it is also not indicating or it is also not correlating with, personally, with me expecting a pivot from a Fed or being so gung-ho in expecting a pivot from the Fed, right? Because signs are there of a slowing economy but all the other factors that should be pointing in that direction for me to completely and confidently say that, okay, the Fed is going to cut interest rates uh, second half of 2022. So sorry, second half of 2023. There are no signs are not there for me, right? And I might be wrong and I'm okay with that. But similar to when I, to when I started buying the dollar in 2021, in August, 
I, I, I needed evidence to guide me. And it was a similar story with, I read the, the Fed statement and they said they want to see what, they want to achieve maximum employment. And then they also want to see uh, inflation at that point because inflation was low. They wanted inflation to be sustainably above the 2%, right? For some time before they can start adjusting their monetary policy stance or position. In that case, we were looking to them tapering and then eventually hiking interest rates and then obviously reducing their balance sheet. But around August, around July, August of 2021, I looked at the data of which is what I'm currently doing as well. I read the statement and then I went to look at the data because the statement will give me what, they've, what the central bank wants to achieve. And then the data will tell me if whether are we heading in that direction or should I now look to, uh, to, to, to act ahead, right? Or have a certain expectation. So going back to the story of 2021, in that case, I saw that GDP was expanding in the US the Fed had not said they are going to hike interest rates, but GDP was expanding. Inflation was sustainably above the 2% target and unemployment, it was still high in the high levels, but it was decreasing, right? So I looked at those three data points and those three data points were telling me that, okay, a trend has developed in terms of GDP strengthening, number one. A trend has developed in terms of inflation being sustainably above the 2% target. So since this is what the Fed said they want to, they want to see, and also maximum employment, of which maximum employment, like I said yesterday, there's, for me, there's not really a number. So if it's decreasing, that's showing that we're heading in that direction. And that is what was happening at the point, at the time. And then that is when I started buying the dollar win in 2021, around July, August, because of what the data was telling me. That is when I was more confident in buying the dollar. And then when the time came towards the end of 2021, when the Fed said, okay, they will now start, start tapering, which is reducing the, the amount of, or the pace in which they are buying bonds. And then come 2022, they said uh, in, in March, that is when they'll start hiking interest rates. When there was now confirmation from the central bank, I had already positioned myself because the data had already, or was, was heading in that direction in terms of supporting uh, the possibility of, achieve, of of the Fed actually achieving their goals, of which we also got what their goals are. If I go back to the statement, it's clearly stated that their goals are to achieve maximum employment and an inflation rate of 2%. And for them to achieve an inflation rate of 2%, we need to see demand dying down. And what I've just show, what I'm showing to everyone currently, that, that those are not signs of demand actually dying down. And like I said, I might be wrong, but this is how I approached it when I was looking to buy the dollar. So now if I'm looking to sell the dollar, I need to see evidence as well that we might be heading in that direction, right? And like I said, I'm open to being wrong as well. But continuing from there, looking at the understanding that we have from, from yesterday's lesson, that uh, we need to see demand dying down. So now let's go, let's go, we're still on the consumers, right? So let's look at consumer, we've seen consumer confidence is picking up. Uh, let us go to um, let us go to disposable income under consumers, right? Let us look at disposable income. We can see that disposable income has been steadily increasing, and we want to see a squeeze in disposable income. Maybe it's maybe it's it's still too early for us to see that happening. But the but the central banks has started hiking interest rates around um, around March last year, right? So we should have seen some sort of a dent. The same way we're seeing inflation sort of like creeping lower we should see some sort of a dent in the disposable income. That's my personal view. And like I said, I'm just trying to keep this basic. Probably there are models that more advanced economists actually use uh, that could, uh, could tell a different story to what I'm seeing, but I'm just taking the basic of what I'm getting and I'm just connecting the dots to try and make sense of everything, right? Because if, if I'm really adamant that the Fed is going to cut interest rates, I need to see evidence, right? It's not, it does not have to be something that I'm just uh, blowing out of thin air because everyone is expecting that, okay, they've been hiking for a very long time and now they need to cut interest rates. No, I need to see ev evidence first and then jump on the bandwagon as well. But from what I'm, from, from where I'm standing, there isn't that much evidence and conviction at the moment. So I always want the data to support the narrative, right? And for me, currently, the data is not really supporting that narrative that much, especially if we look at other geopolitical factors, the war between Russia and Ukraine, US-China tensions, if that also escalates as well, 
uh, then that could throw the whole risk environment into a, what, a risk of sentiment. And that to a certain extent would favor the dollar as well. Right. So I um, think those that, that is where my thinking is at the moment. Right. Not to say uh, there will be some weakness in the dollar. Yes, there will be. But is it something that I'm expecting for it to 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 persist for some time? Not based on what not based on the on the data that I'm looking at. Right. And like I said, I'm open to being wrong, but that is where I stand. So we can see disposable income is not actually going down. It has been steadily increasing. OK. Let us look at, uh, let us look at uh, what else can we look at when it comes to personal spending as well. Let us see personal spending. So personal spending, okay, this is now, this has now actually fell down, right? So that could be a sign that, okay, we might be seeing uh, uh, the, 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 a decrease in spending because of what? Of interest rates actually going higher. Maybe now consumers have actually uh, are, are feeling the squeeze and they are now what they are now diverting in terms of what they spend their money their their money on, and that is why we've seen a decline or a decrease in economic spending, right? So if you look at a five year, we can see okay, then it's it's pretty much back in the flat level of zero, right? But it's it's decreasing if we look at it from a year to year basis, right? Or in a one year basis, so that could be a sign that okay, the the actual interest rates hike. Are having a what are having a, a, a an actual impact on, on on the consumer behavior? Like if we read here, uh, high high interest rates, uh, high interest rates and rise in inflation levels started to impact consumer behavior. Spending fell on goods, namely gasoline and motor vehicle parts and services, mainly housing, air transport, and healthcare. Adjusted for inflation, personal spending dropped to zero point three uh, percent. So. We might, we might be getting some positivity here in terms of we might be heading in that direction. But looking at all the other factors, we are not currently headed in that direction, right? And we can obviously look at more, more, more other, because there, there are a lot of indicators here that we can look at to try and track and support the narrative of a Fed pivot, right? Or of the Fed actually cutting interest rates. So that is where I stand or that is where I am when it comes to the Fed. And that is the reason why I wanted to start with the lesson yesterday so that we can have an understanding of if the goal is to fight inflation, we need to, we need to know what produces inflation. What are, the, what are the factors that contribute to inflation? And then we need to see, are those factors actually reversing or slowing down? Because if they're not, then chances are inflation will be stick more stickier or will be here for longer. And that will mean that even though the Fed might not be back to hiking aggressively by 0.75%, but they might keep interest rates higher for longer, or they might continue hiking in increments of 0.25% for longer than what the market is currently uh, expecting or pricing in, right? But then again, we're in a speculative game. So uh, anything can really happen, right? So yeah, just taking a pause now. Uh, based on everything that I've just said or highlighted, uh, anyone with questions or maybe you do not understand or maybe you have a different view to what I've just said. It's a safe space, guys. So if you have anything, uh, just just yeah, let everyone know. Okay, I'm hearing crickets. Uh, okay, does any of what I've, what, does it make sense? All that I've spoken about for the last, what, 20 minutes or so. Did it make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it did make sense. Um, but just a quick, a quick question. Yeah. On, um, on what you said uh, regarding the positions that you were uh, taking on the US dollar in 2021. Mm -hmm. So my question is, we, uh, are, are these the only factors that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna, um, that I'm gonna say now, are, are these the only factors that you were looking at when you decided to, take your, 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 your position on the US dollar, where you're looking at GDP, consumer confidence, disposable income, personal spending, and of course, uh, 
the the, the interest rates um, hike hikes by the Fed were, were those the only factors that you were looking at? Uh, pretty much, the factors. Or, or for me to 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 for for the factors that I focus on, I need to know what the what the central bank wants to do. Because remember, that's where I started. That firstly, who's responsible for the economy? It's the central bank. Of course, the government also plays a role, but it's predominantly the central bank. They are mandated. It's their job. It's their duty. They are employed to do what to maintain price stability. So that is why I need to go and read the statement. Number one. Number two. Once I've read the the statement. I need to understand what they are looking for, what their objectives or goals are, so that I can have, because that will give me a sense of direction. Because now, if I know that back then, like I explained back then, they were looking at achieving the same thing that they, they're looking to achieve right now, just in reverse when it comes to inflation. Back then, they wanted inflation to go above the 2% target, to get closer to the 2% target and remain sustainably above 2% target for them too start looking at uh, hiking interest rates, right? Or to slow down because then they were performing quantitative easing. They were buying a lot of bonds, injecting a lot of money into the economy. So for them to backtrack on that or slow down on that, they, that is what they wanted to see. Maximum employment as well as inflation going towards their 2% target. So now with that, with just by reading that, and of course, a couple of things that they also highlight like they did here, uh, of which in this one, they also mentioned that they'll continue selling their or, or reducing its holdings of treasury, which means that they'll continue reducing their balance sheets. So now I need to understand, okay, what is the impact of if, if they continue reducing their balance sheet, right? What is the impact uh, or, or, or sorry, or and, and for them to achieve their 2% target, what needs to happen, right? So that is, that is where my thinking lies. And that is where my thinking was as well at that point in 2021. It was like, okay, so for them to achieve their 2% target, or so, sorry, for them to actually start reducing their quantitative easing, because quantitative easing, like I explained yesterday, if you, if, you, if you caught that part where I was explaining the bank model, is that they, they usually perform it to save the economy. Right. Or they step in to save the economy. So I understood that, OK, they are supporting the economy by continuing to buy more bonds. So at which point would they now be like, OK, we are no longer going to or we are going to take a step back or cut back on how much we are supporting the economy. We, I needed to see that the economy was performing or was in a good position. So in that case, in 2021, I looked at GDP. I was like, OK, GDP. Is, is sustainably increasing, right? It was, I think at that point, it was around five, six percent, right? So I was like, okay, that's very good, strong numbers. And on a back to back situation, not that only just one quarterly GDP reading, two quarterly GDP readings were showing growth. And then I was like, okay, that means that the economy is quite strong, number one. Number two, like I said, unemployment was going down and they said they want maximum employment. Yes, um, unemployment was still high in relative terms if we look at where it is right now at 3.4 percent because i think we're still around six or five i stand to be corrected but it was decreasing every month so i was like okay unemployment is headed in the right direction so now for inflation to go up to two percent uh sorry not for not for inflation to go up to two percent but then now let's look at inflation inflation has been above two percent i think at that point maybe it was for like two months or three months, inflation was above 2%. So who am I to now go against what they said they want to achieve? They want to see maximum employment of which unemployment is going down. They want to see inflation persistently above the 2% target. And that is what we have. So now if they say that is what they want to see before they can start changing their monetary policy position, then that is when I started looking to buy the dollar because I understood that, okay, for them to hike interest rates, they need this, the economy needs to support that. What do I mean? They need to be strengthened the economy because if they're hiking interest rates, they're going to kill demand. They're going to slow down economic activity. So if the economy is already in a bad position, then that could quickly and easily drive the economy into a recession. And I've just mentioned to you that inflation, sorry, GDP was extreme, not extremely high, but it was around five, 6%. So that was fairly good compared to all the, the other economies. So that showed that there was strength in that economy. Inflation is now 
above two percent target for a couple of months so even if they were to come out tomorrow and be like okay we are looking to hike interest rates it would make sense because the economy would be able to support that it wouldn't slow down into a recession it had some buffer or some room right in terms of slowing down so that is when i started looking to buy the dollar just based on that which is why even right now i read the whole statement and then i'm like okay they want to achieve two percent inflation but then what do we need to see as data that supports that? Because in their statements, they never mentioned that we want to see GDP strong or GDP at this level. Some central banks might say that, but for the Fed, they never said that. But I understood that for them to hike interest rates or for them to stop supporting the economy, they need to see that the, the economy is actually growing and booming. And that is why I kept track, tracking of uh, tracking GDP as well at, at the same time, looking at what their goals were. Mm. I'm not sure if I answered your question. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, you, yeah, you did. Uh, one last question. Um, so based on all of the things that you talked about yesterday, which was, mm. I can say, um, basic... Uh, economics uh, telling us what, how inflation uh, sorry the factor that you have to look at when inflation is high and mm -hmm. all the correlating uh, factors there so my question is so based on that information that you gave us yesterday we just have to translate it and apply it to real world economies of countries exactly. and know that for example um, if the inflation rates if central banks wants, wants to achieve the 2% inflation rate, uh, demand needs to go down. So therefore yeah. we have to look at um, what it means when demand is going down, right? Yes, yes, so, exactly. Okay. Which no, is why, this, this is what, I, what I'm doing today is actually what I wanted to do. That was the whole reason why I was doing, creating this masterclass, but which is why yesterday I kept on saying that some of you some of you might be familiar with what i taught yesterday but i want to start there because for this to make sense you need to have that basic understanding all right you know because now if, if if i had just jumped to what i'm doing today and then the next thing i'm going on trading and economics and i'm talking about disposable income i'm talking about personal spending on the consumer side then it wouldn't make sense to i'm talking about employed persons unemployed persons it wouldn't really make sense to you that okay where does this what where, where, where does this whole thing fit in but because we understood that if they are fighting inflation and hiking interest rates then the labor market is going to take a hit because it might lead to businesses retrenching inability inability to pay back their loans because of high borrowing costs right so all of those things now that you have an understanding you know okay this is where i need to go to to see if whether are we heading in that direction okay you know so yeah that right. yeah that was pretty much the reason why i started with yesterday's lesson and like you just said you need to always stick to what 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 i i sort of covered yesterday whenever you're feeling confused go back to that and then try and connect the dots from there right and that will lead you will, will lead you in the right direction um no, yeah it has for me and yeah I, it hasn't failed till this day so which is why I'm confident in, in that if you stick to the basics, you know the basics of how the central bank operates and the reasons behind in terms of reading the statement and trying to understand their goals, then that is all you need to focus on because they're telling you. They are telling you what they want to see or what they want to achieve. So now it's a matter of are they failing at achieving that or are they heading in that direction? If they're heading in that direction, then it's good. So if all the, the, the factors uh, that contribute to inflation are pointing to a slowdown, then it would be okay. Then I would also be confident, okay, we definitely gonna get some rate cuts. We're gonna get a pause and then we're gonna get some rate cuts, right, from the Fed. But right now we do have factors that are showing a slowdown in the economy, but other, most indicators are not supporting that narrative for me personally. So that is why I'm I'm not yet in the in the bandwagon of the Fed is going to cut interest rates in 2023. No. For now, yeah. I just need evidence. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Eh? yeah, not a problem. Uh. So yeah, that is that is that is now that is when we step in and we and 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 we incorporate everything with the central banks, right? So, 
that is with regards to the Fed. Uh, in a cup, I think we he's already uh, having a speech right now, Fed uh, Chair Jerome Powell. Uh, but I'll catch up uh, on it after this. Uh, but yeah, so also what he says right now, is it a pushback against what the market has been pricing? Because we recently had a surprise in the in the jobs data, NFP, on Friday. And it will be the first time he'll be speaking after that surprise figure. And also today we had a couple of uh, Federal Reserve uh, members actually speaking and they were also hawkish from their standpoint right so that shows that the fight against inflation we could say is far from over because if the like i just said if the labor market is still strong then where is the demand dying or when will the well because for the demand to die then we need to see the labor market taking a hit as well so yeah that is there that was just a side note so from there, it's all about understanding the different central banks and what they're looking for, what they're looking at, and then just uh, taking it from there. Before you even go on to the geopolitics, uh, by geopolitics, I mean what is happening in other economies, in other economies, is there war going on, is there some trade tensions, whatever that may be happening. We just need to understand the central bank first, right? Are they meeting, are they heading in the direction of their goals or are they failing? in achieving their targets or objectives or whatever their goals are. That is what we need to um, focus on. So now we are going to go on to the Bank of Japan. Uh, I won't go over all the central banks. Um, no, I, I won't go there. I won't go there, but I'm just trying to connect everything, what we learned yesterday and to how I sort of like try and piece everything together. So we're gonna we're gonna lay the latest monetary policy statement. Let me go. It should be somewhere here. Monetary policy releases. Statements on monetary policy. The latest okay january 18 that's the latest one that we have these are the guys who make decisions right so i need to know what they're thinking what they're looking for so at the monetary policy meeting held today the policy board of uh, of the bank of japan decided upon the following yield curve control uh unanimous vote the bank decided to set the following guidelines for market operations for the intermeeting uh, period uh, the short-term policy interest rate, the bank will apply negative, so they're keeping their interest rates at negative 0.1. Um, business and current accounts held by financial institutions at the bank. The long-term interest rates, uh, the bank will purchase a necessary amount of Japanese government bonds without setting an upper limit so that the 10-year Japanese government bond yield will remain at around 0%. We're getting this from the, from the central bank, right? Does that mean that we'll always be selling the, the, the Japanese yen? No, but then we're getting that from the central bank that they are, they are still going to purchase a necessary amount without setting an upper limit, which means there will be no limit into how much they purchase. As, as long as they deem necessary, that amount is what they will purchase. But let us continue reading. Conduct of yield curve control. The bank will continue to allow 10-year Japanese government bond yields to fluctuate in the range of around plus and minus 0.5% points from the target level and will offer to purchase 10-year Japanese government bonds at 0.5% every business day through fixed rate purchase operations, unless it is highly likely that no bids will be submitted. In order to encourage the formation of the yield curve control that is consistent with the above guideline for market operations, the bank will continue with the large scale Japanese government bond purchases and make nimble responses each, each maturity by increasing the amount of, G, of JGB purchases and conducting fixed rate purchase operations, right? We all, this is all we're getting from the central bank. We don't need to make anything up. We're getting this from the central bank, from the horse's mouth, that okay, 
they have a yield curve control. What does that mean? They're going to set an upper limit of 0.5%. So for, for their 10-year uh, Japanese government interest rate or yield, they will set a, a ceiling of 0.5%. So they don't want to see or they don't want to see their longer term interest rates go above 0.5%. And for them to counter that, they are going to buy more bonds. Because remember, we said that if they buy more buying bonds is equivalent to a certain degree or has the same effect. Let's not say equivalent. It's a very strong word. Has the same effect as cutting interest rates. So for them to stop a further uh, increase in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 10-year uh, yield, they uh, once it gets to 5%, they need to buy more bonds so that they can lower the yield. Because remember, there's an inverse correlation between the, the bond and the bond yield. If the bond price goes up and they buy bonds, then the yield should go down, which is why they'll buy the bonds, the bonds, the bond, if the bond yield gets to 0.5% to ensure that it does not go above that, right? So that is essentially what it means and it's something that this whole yield curve control they it's something they implemented around 2016 so it's been there for a time a long a long time right why at the same time because their economy has been in a low inflationary environment the japanese economy has been in a low inflationary environment and then if you go back to the diagram of which i i won't switch screens right now but based on what we explained yesterday if they're trying to stimulate inflation, they need to buy bonds. They need to buy uh, bonds in the form of quantitative easing, right? And that is what the central bank has been doing in terms of the Japanese central bank. So now, in another thing to take note of, in the yield curve control, previously it was at 0.25%, and now they've increased it to 0.5%. So that we could say it's a step in the right direction because they are no longer, they, they, they sort of, increasing the ceiling from 0.25 now it's at 0.5% and who knows maybe at some point they're going to like okay we completely removing the ceiling which means we are okay with interest rates going higher and then that might be the pivot where the bank of japan actually starts hiking interest rates but let's continue reading to understand more of what they they are looking for what they are trying to achieve so then guidelines for asset purchases with regards to asset purchases other than Japanese government bond purchases, the bank decided to set the following guidelines. So they spoke about the rates, ETFs, and the corporate bonds and all of that, right? So you can read that as well. I won't really dive much into it. Uh, but what I really want to get to is that the bank decided by unanimous vote to extend by one year the deadline for loan disimbursement. Uh, we can also go into that. And then, okay, number three, the bank will continue with quantitative and qualitative monetary easing with yield curve control. Going back to what we learned yesterday, quantitative easing, right? What does that mean? Why is that being performed? And now they're saying the bank will continue with that. This is in January, 2023. They are saying the bank will continue with that. So, and the reason why uh, is aiming to achieve the price stability target of 2% as long as it is necessary for maintaining the target in a stable manner. So by price stability, they're referring to inflation. So they want inflation to be above 2%. It will continue expanding the monetary base until the year-on-year -year rate, which is the, the, the headline uh, of increase in the observed consumer price index, CPI or items less fresh food, which is core inflation, exceeds 2% and stays above the target in a stable manner. For the time being, while closely monitoring the impact of COVID-19, the bank will support financing mainly of firms and maintain stability. They will support financing, which means that they will be injecting some money in the economy. They will be performing some easing of financial conditions, not tightening, of which tightening is where, it, it, it's where they're aging closer towards hiking interest rates and all of that. Uh, but they say they will maintain stability in financial markets and will not hesitate to take additional easing measures if necessary. It also expects short and long-term policy interest rates to remain at their present or lower levels. This is from the horse's mouth. Now, how do, how, how do I interpret, interpret that? Take it as is and then need to understand what their objectives are. Here, one thing that stands out is that they want to see the year-on-year -year rate increase of consumer price index, which is core CPI, exceeding 2% and staying above the target in a stable manner. Is that happening? Okay, now let's go to uh, Japan. 
focus.japan. Because that will that is how I'll know that is how I position myself, right? Before there is confirmation. Because there, there's no confirmation that they're looking to to tighten financial conditions or looking to hike at any point. We're not getting any of that from that uh, Bank of Japan statement. But now, if you look at GDP, because you understand, okay, they, 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 okay, sorry, they're going back to their target is it is uh, core inflation being uh, exceeding 2% and staying above the targets in a stable manner. Now, it's, whenever they say stable manner, that's too uh, ambiguous. Uh, stable manner, there's no, it, it, it's easier if they say maybe want it to be above the 2% target for three months, then we know that, okay, once that, once it stays above for, for three months, now we can look to expect that, okay, maybe the Bank of Japan might start hiking interest rates or tightening financial conditions and maybe drop the whole act of yield curve control, applying that ceiling at 0.5% and maybe look to actually hike interest rates, right? But there, they're just saying in a stable manner. So it's anyone's guess, essentially what a stable manner is. But if we look at the first objective that they want to, or the one that actually stands out for me, when it comes to the Bank of Japan is core inflation, right? So if we look at core inflation, they want core inflation to be above 2% in a stable manner. And if I look since April, 2022, inflation has been above the 2% target. So now that for me is like, okay, it raises an eyebrow that, okay, we might be heading in a direction where we actually see the Bank of Japan actually changing their stance or their position and look to hike interest rates, even though they still saying it verbatim on their statement that they know it heading in that direction, right? Yes, they, they, they have started with the yield curve control from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. So now if we're looking at inflation also, for me, I view this as being stable or, or being above the target in a stable manner. If for nine, what this this not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now for nine months, inflation has been above the two percent target. Before that, if we look at uh, before that, inflation here's two percent, as you can see. Before that, the last time inflation was above two percent, it was around 2015, right? And that is when they started applying the yield curve control around September 2016. So the last time it was around 2014 when, when inflation came to 2%, right? So, and it's something that they said they want to see inflation in a stable manner above that, because you can see this is a 10 year period. So what does it tell me? I'm not going to do any guesswork, but this is what they want to see. And based on what inflation is telling me uh, for, for the Japanese economy, the core inflation specifically excluding uh, fresh, uh, all items, less fresh food, that is core inflation it is above in a stable manner. So that also, should I say, strengthens the narrative that we might see what uh, strengthening of the, of the Bank of Japan or the Japanese yen, because one of their objectives I feel is being met. One of their goals that they want to see is being met, which is inflation persistently above. Because before that, they've been experiencing deflation or a high deflationary environment where inflation has been low, sometimes to negative one as you can see, right, uh, around the, after COVID, right? So that is where I stand with what? With the Bank of Japan. But for me to understand that, I needed to have the information or the basic knowledge of what we learned yesterday. For when I read the statement, I need to understand what quantitative easing is, why it's being performed, and all of those reasons. And then now I can be able to go back to the data and be like, okay, this is their target or goal. Are they heading in that direction? And based on what I'm seeing on inflation, it is heading in that direction. So now I can start looking at positioning myself in terms of maybe buying the Japanese yen. Because that is what the 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 the, the, the um, core inflation is is actually heading in their in their objective or goal, right? So I can look to probably start uh, turning bullish on the Japanese yen, but will I do that against the dollar? Probably not, but I can look at other economies like the like like the pound, GBP, JPY, right? So then now I'll be like, okay, inflation is going, is going is above their target and that is what they wanna see, core inflation specifically in a stable manner, nine months above target, that is a stable manner for me. Nothing gets as stable as that because it's close to a year. 
in three months' time, it will, if if it remains above target, it will be three year, uh, three, twelve months above target. So that will be more than stable. So now I'm looking to act ahead, right, or to be a step ahead of the market. Not necessarily a step ahead, but I act before there is confirmation. The same way I did when I when I started buying the dollar. So now I'll be like, okay. So if I'm looking at the central bank hiking interest rates, what needs to or what other conditions or factors need to support that so obviously they can't hike interest rates if the economy is, is already slowing down or the economy is dying unemployment is increasing so now i can then look okay japan japanese yen i'm looking to buy so now i can look at okay how is gdp doing how is the health of the economy and i look at all those factors do they support a a a um do they support a rate hike from that from the Bank of Japan, right? If there is growth in the in GDP, and I'm also seeing of which in this case I'd say it's more flat. Some another quarter it's positive, the next quarter it's negative, so it's more flat here. Uh, then I'd look at uh, other factors like maybe the ISM, right? So I'd look in, at uh, businesses. I'd look at the ISM. So maybe manufacturing. I'd look at uh, services, composite. All those manufacturers, not not ISM, sorry guys, the, the PMIs, ISM is for is for the dollar, right? So PMIs. So I look at PMIs. Okay, services PMIs have been have, have been increasing, right? So that that is also signaling what signaling um, growth in the economy. You know. So then, if I also look at uh, services PMI, that is the non-manufacturing. So if I look at services PMI, we can see that okay, the the midpoint here is fifty. It was below 50, now it's starting to pick up. So maybe if I can get two more readings that are also showing a pick up in services PMI, then I'll be more confident in buying because I'm not getting much from GDP. Let us look at manufacturing PMI. This is essentially how I look at it. I, I keep it as basic and as simple as possible. Okay, uh, manufacturing PMI is actually has been decreasing and declining significantly below the 50% mark and it's still there. So we're still flat essentially. Uh, so I still need more evidence uh, for me to actually support going fully in when it comes to buying what, when it comes to buying the Japanese yen. But I'm heading in that direction because, not because I feel like it, but because what they want to see, because they say the bank, of, it will continue expanding its monetary base until that is a, that this is a very powerful statement. They, essentially, what they're saying is the Bank of Japan will continue expanding their monetary base. By expanding, it means buying more bonds, having uh, looser financial conditions, the monetary base until the year on year rate of increase uh, in the observed consumer price index, uh, CPI or our terms, less fresh food, exceeds 2%. So, until that's a very, that's a very strong word. Until is a very strong word. So, so until two percent uh, inflation is above two percent in a stable manner, that is only and only when they will stop expanding the monetary base. So maybe that is when they will stop buying bonds. And like we explained, if we looked at inflation nine months above, so we are heading in that direction. Let us not be naive about that and say that no, we just want to sell the Japanese. And no, this, this is what the central bank is looking at, and this is what is happening. So we are heading in that direction. We just need more confirmation or, or, or supporting factors to say, okay, no, let us, let us buy, let us buy, let us buy the Japanese. But I am heading in that bullish, uh, in, in that bull or in that bullish sense, or I am, let's say, partially bullish on the, on the, on the, on, on the, on the Japanese, yen, right. Especially against the dollar. But if we looking at it against the pound, then GBP, JPY, I am looking to sell GBP, JPY, right. And of course, for me to also understand that we'd have to go into reading the statement of the Bank of England, right? And getting the data and getting what they want, what are their objectives? And then looking at the data that supports what they're saying in their statement. Are they heading towards their goal? Are they moving out further away? If they're moving further away, that means they're failing. Then we are going to sell that economy. So that is how I just approach everything. So going back to Japan, to the Japanese economy, so we can look at consumer, right? Consumer confidence, right? These are all just, it might not be significant to, to, to some of you, but 
I'm just I'm just trying to build a strong case, right? And not and minimize the guesswork as much as possible. Take everything from the central bank, from the horse's mouth to base my decisions. So we can see that consumer confidence has been picking up since uh, October. It's still very low compared to maybe like the dollar of which it's sitting at around the 60s, 50s, 60s, but it is picking up, right? So it is headed in the right direction as well. Then we can look at um, the labor market, right? Let us look at the labor market. Uh, so the labor market. So let us look at uh, unemployment rate first. So look at the unemployment rate. So we now know that, okay, their objective is met. Let's say their objective is met, right? Of 2% of above, uh, of inflation above 2% in a stable manner. So now we're looking at things to support that. So start with the statement, look at the goals or the objectives, look at things to support uh, that objective or goal. If none is there, then they failing, right? Or they not yet headed, headed in that direction. So that is why we're looking at unemployment. Unemployment is very low. It has been low. It, yeah, it's fluctuating be around 2.5, 2 2.6. Let us look at a, uh, let us expand the time horizon. So pre-20, pre-COVID, it was around, let's say around 2. Point, yeah, around 2.4-ish, right? So we are headed in that in that direction as well, right? So we are headed in that direction. So inflation, sorry, unemployment is decreasing, right? Which is good which is good, which means that if unemployment is decreasing, let's look at the unemployed persons, look at the employed persons, right? Which direction is that headed? Unemployed persons is also decreasing. Employed persons, uh, let us look at that as well. Okay, it's, it, it's, let's say it's flat, right? It, it has been decreasing, sort of peaking up. So it's flat, up and down, right? So we'd say it's flat, right? But then those are all the things we are looking at to see or if, if whether the economy will be able to support that pivot. So now I can look at, okay, I am bullish on the Japanese yen based on what this, the central bank said they want to achieve. We are headed in that direction. So since we are headed in that direction, or we are, we are that is, I feel we are, we are there with core inflation. So now at some point they will look to change their monetary policy. And then we look at all the other geopolitical factors, look at the fact that um, the current governor, Kurodo, uh, his term will be ending in April. And uh, one of the articles that I read last year was he said that they will continue having loose financial conditions or being in this uh, buying bonds, essentially, until he steps down. One of the articles, I just need to find a link in that article and I'll actually share it on Instagram as well. That is what he said. And he's stepping down in around April this year. So we might be headed in that pivot where we finally get to see the Bank of Japan hiking interest rates because it's the only central bank that is currently not hiking interest rates or keeping interest rates on hold, right? So yeah, that is, that is, that is, that is, that is essentially where I am with the Bank of Japan as well. So not to drag this long as well. I won't go into other central banks, but it's just repeating the same process. Go to all the other central banks. Look at the Bank of England. Look at the ECB, European Central Bank. Read their statement. Read their talk, their objectives and goals, and then go back to the data. Is the data supporting that? If they say that they are now data dependent, is the data supporting that? Right. Go to today. We had uh, or early hours of the morning, like in South Africa, we had uh, the Bank of Australia. Right they hiked interest rates and they shifted from being in a data dependent state or, or not being in a preset path when it comes to uh, hiking interest rates to now saying that interest rates will need to go higher because inflation is quite sticky. So we need to go to money, interest rate. Excuse me, guys. Um, so the Reserve Bank of Australia raised the cash rate by 25 basis point at its February meeting, matching market forecast, Tuesday's move was the ninth rate hike since March since May last year, which brought uh, borrowing costs to a level last seen in September 2012. A total of 325 basis points, 3.25% increases, also marked the sharpest annual tightening since 1989, while dropping the previous guidance of unpreset path the board reiterated further hikes would be needed 
as inflation in Australia remain too high. The central bank uh, seeks to return inflation to two to three percent range and projects the reading to come in at four to three and a half this year of inflation and around three and a half by mid 2025. If this is their projections for them to get it close to two to three percent, and they see that by the end of this year, it will probably be at around 4%, four to three and, a, three and a quarter, then they need to do what? They need to continue hiking interest rates. Of course, this is more like a summarized version, but you can go onto the actual Reserve Bank of Australia, read the full statement, get the full details. But essentially, that is also what it's telling you. They've, they've, they've dropped, because if you look at all the other statements previously, uh, they would say that the committee reiterated the policy rate was not on a preset course, as the size and timing of future rate increases will continue to be determined by the incoming data. That is what they, they were saying. This was uh, around, this was in, in, in uh, December, right? Their, 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 their interest rate decision in December. And then the latest one, they did not say, they omitted the statement. There is no statement where the committee reiterated the policy rate was not on a preset path. Where else, if you read all the other ones, they, they, they continued to, re to reiterate the very same thing, right? That they're not on a preset path and uh, it, 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 it's all data dependent, right? So now with the shift in that, and then if we're looking at inflation, where does inflation currently sit uh, for for where's prices where does inflation currently sit for for inflation rate here for australia if they seeing it at four percent and the target is two to three percent currently inflation is around seven point eight percent yeah seven point eight percent so they still have a long way to go to get to two to three percent and they they personally projecting that it will be around four three and a three and a three and a quarter percent by end of 2023 which means that they still have more hiking or tightening to go so we can do the very same thing as well look at all the things that could support a slowdown in inflation are we getting that if not then we can look to start buying the the, the australian dollar also adding to that, now looking at external factors, we can also say, okay, we expect more rate hikes. That is what the central bank is also saying. And on the other uh, side or on the other end of the spectrum, we have a, a, the China reopening. If that is also successful, what does that mean? It means it will benefit Australia. Why? Because Australia is an importer of iron ore to who? To the Chinese. And China uses iron ore for steel production, or it's one of their main ingredients for steel production. So we can now look at steel production. If we see that to be picking up as well, we understand that, okay, it means it's going to benefit Australia. And then we, they still have more, 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 more room to go in terms of hiking interest rates. We now look at the strength of the economy of Australia. It's also picking up. It's going to, so that is how you start generating and formulating those trade ideas. So you can look at whether, to to find value in that economy to buy or to sell that economy right so yeah that that is pretty much um yeah let's say that's all i have for today um and uh, any questions any questions hello yes uh, sorry, uh, I don't know whether I'm, I'm, I'm blocking others uh, from asking their questions. No, 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 no. Definitely, if you have a question, <laughs> feel free to ask. I prefer okay, that because so... it means you are learning. Uh, no. But for the other guys, it means that they already know this, which is also a good thing. So, yeah. All right. So my question is, you uh, mentioned geopolitics. So I want to yeah. ask... Uh, I want to ask about a practical example, something that happened last year, the the Ukraine invasion and stuff. Yep. Right. So if you um, remember well, when that when that invasion happened, almost, well, I can say maybe for like Euro Odd and GBP NZT and Euro NZT, those particular currencies, I, I was actually monitoring because I wanted to, to take um, some, some, some swing trades. But when that invasion happened, 
uh, the moves that I was anticipating were completely like destroyed because of that. Yeah. So you find that most currency pairs when that thing happened uh, were going short, almost all of them for like the greater part of like three months, most of them were just mm. going on short, uh, like we're selling. So my yeah. question is like regarding all the factors that we have to look at um, when we are trying to formulate ideas fundamentally, mm-hmm. how, how much, how much uh, impact does geopolitics have on, on us analyzing? Like how much contribution does geopolitics have on our, on our analysis? Should we actually like consider it or what? Yeah, we definitely have to consider it. Because uh, you need to understand geopolitics, they, 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 to a certain extent, they determine the environment. They can change an environment as well. By environment, I mean risk on, risk off, right? Uh, okay. Is there uncertainty or is there certainty growth in, uh, in terms of the global economy? Now, let's look at the global economy. Uh, is that specific geopolitical um, incident only affecting one economy or is it going to affect the global economy of which the war between Russia and Ukraine in as much as it was more affecting the euro directly because they it's like if 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 people are throwing stones next door or your neighbor they 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 shooting one another chances are some stray bullets are going to hit your hit your house right or will head in your direction right so that is that was the case with the euro which is okay russia and ukraine they are neighbors essentially so if they are fighting i will also be affected because maybe where they're fighting we have some we have maybe there's there's a road there's a road that that goes through their cities uh and that road is used for to deliver important stuff to me but now since they are shooting one another the the transportation in that area is also disturbed so now i cannot get what i need on time so you that is how that is how i look at it well that is how i look yeah that's how i look at it so with regards to that the russia ukraine war the reason why i was more on on it's gonna affect the euro and i kept on saying i'm shorting the euro i'm shorting the euro uh whether even when they started hiking interest rates i was like i'm shorting the euro because of the of of the fact that i understood the dependency of the euro on russia and the fact that if it's happening close to you it will affect you so if it's going to escalate further then that means it's going to affect you. If 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 it if there's a de-escalation, then it's not going to affect you that much. So, when it comes to geopolitics, we need to pay attention to them, because they will definitely have. We we have to have an understanding, of course, uh, which economies they will impact directly, and will they have a global scale in terms of impact. And uh, the war between Russia and Ukraine definitely did have a, an impact on global scale because it resulted or it contributed to higher uh, oil prices, of which everyone felt that because it meant inflation went higher since commodity prices were going higher, right? Even here in South Africa, we experienced it because the, the cost of uh, maize started going up because those are all things that we import uh, from from all those countries, uh, Russia, uh, Ukraine, uh, fertilizer, all of that, you know? So you need to have an understanding of the extent that uh, that uh, geopolitical uh, situation uh, will, will have, right? Or the effect that it will have. Of course, it's more detrimental for EU than for us South Africans because EU, it's just next door, you know? So I hope I answered your question there. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. Um... One last one. Uh, this one is not more of a question. It's more of like uh, me wanting you to affirm something. Um, <laughs> with 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 everything that you have said, while we were reading those those uh, monetary policies from these central banks, could you agree to say that when when one is reading those statements, um, we need like a deep analytical. Uh, um, skill of some sort for us to understand those technical terms and what to view because uh yeah it's it's not so easy so could you say that we really need to actually take time to read those and understand them fully before we analyze um 
and from the trade ideas. Mm. I would I would say to a certain yeah I'd say I'd say partially I'd say partially there is some technical some technicality or technical understanding that you need to have, but it all goes back to what like I what I what I what I covered yesterday. Pretty much most of it that that is what it centers around right. It centers around what drives currencies GDP dynamics. What about do I mean by GDP growth and inflation? So if you understand contributory factors to those two things things that support growth, things that go against growth, things that support high inflation or that produce high inflation or what needs to happen for inflation to drop. So if you have an understanding of that, when you're going to the statement, you also need a level of understanding of the statement. Why? Like I said, I, 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 I always go back to this. Central banks are responsible for the currency. The last thing a central bank wants is a surprise or for them to surprise the market. It does happen from time to time, but they want to try and communicate their message as clearly as possible. Because if they do not, that is when we'll, we'll have things like hammer flash crashes because it is a reaction from the market, right? So they try and communicate their message as much as possible to, be, to try and be as transpar and transparent or as clear as possible to the, the market participants or investors in terms of what they are looking at or what they are looking to do or achieve for their economy and most importantly so that they can keep their job because it's their job and I keep going back to this they are not doing this for fun they have been hired by Kashiwe I'm gonna use Zulu they have been hired it's their let's call it their nine to five it's their nine to five job uh, to actually, uh, it's their nine to five job to actually maintain price stability. So why would I ignore their statements if this is their job? Because if they get it wrong, then their job is on the line, which means that their, 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 their sense of security is also on the line because they might lose an income, you know? So that is why I, I really take reading a central bank statements very highly and very I take it very seriously because it is their job. They do not need, they do make blunders and mistakes, but they try as much as possible to avoid those mistakes. So that is why partially it needs a, a, a technical understanding of what inflation is, GDP, unemployment, how all those things play into the whole business cycle or economic cycle. And then you need to understand the statement. And most statements are, they usually straightforward if you know the technicalities or what we covered yesterday. If you do not know what quantitative easing is, then you won't even be able to understand EU curve control. You won't even be able to understand what E yield is if you do not know interest rates. Yeah, well, so you need that understanding of our interest rates, e yield, and all of that for you to be in a better position. Okay. Did I answer your question or did I just did. Uh, blabber around? <laughs> no, no, no. No, you did. Okay. Uh, any more questions or uh, suggestions or maybe something that I missed that you'd like to add? Uh, anyone? Anyone? Okay. So um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to suggest one thing. Maybe I don't know um, the 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 length or let me say the duration of this of this masterclass. But I wanted to suggest that maybe towards the end of the masterclass, um, maybe you show us the maybe a practical example of what maybe of a, of your analysis maybe let's say for the what can i say for the maybe let's say a gold position swing position that you took and you tell us the analysis that you did fundamental wise and then you tell us how you did that analysis and then trade wise how you took that that particular position so that we get an understanding of how um maybe if we want to do it uh, on our own of, on how we are supposed to to do it 
I don't know if you understand me. Oh, I get what you're saying. But the whole process, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. But it's just what I'm doing now. It's the whole process. Me, what I was doing with everyone right now, that's my analysis of the dollar. You oh. now know where I stand with the dollar. So all I have to do is look at all the other economies and find an economy where I'm spotting, I'm spotting some weakness that I could look to sell against the dollar. Okay. So that is how I... I, now I have I have a direction because because the technical side, sorry the fundamental side for me, gives me the direction, right? So that okay. is what the, the, the fundamental side does. All right. It gives me the direction. So now that I know the direction, I need to go into my technical chart and be like, okay, once I've looked at the dollar, I've looked at another pay and I'm like, okay, this pay is weaker than the dollar based on what the central bank wants to achieve and based on what the data is telling me. Now, let me look to buy the dollar against this pay or let me look to sell this pay against the dollar, right? So for example, GBP USD, let me say, okay, then I say, okay, I'm looking to sell GBP USD because I'm finding this weakness, gui, gui pound, they strength, gui nakuzan, gui, gui dollar. The Bank of England, they wish for, uh, for, 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 for them to actually stop hiking on my interest rates, but they can't because inflation is very high. It's very sticky. And there are a lot of factors that are contributing to inflation, but the economy in terms of growth is very weak. So I'm, now I'm adding, okay, we need growth or for them to continue hiking interest rates, we need to see strength in the economy, right? To support the hike in interest rates and, and for inflation to eventually drop back to their, towards their targets or their objective based on what they say on their statement, if I'm reading that. So now, but we, we're seeing a sharp decline or a slowdown in growth, but inflation is still remaining sticky. Yes, it's decreasing, but it's still remaining sticky and they still have more room to go or they still have more work to, to do before inflation actually comes even close to their target, right? But now, GDP-wise, uh, PMIs and all of those things, uh, consumer confidence, they are all sharply declining. So how do I view that? I'm like, okay, they are definitely going to hike this, their, their economy into a recession because growth is not there and already they still need to continue hiking. So it's now either we stay with elevated inflation and we stop hiking our interest rates or we continue hiking interest rates to try and fight inflation and throw our economy into a recession. So now if I look at those two economies, the pound and the dollar, I'm like, who's in a better position? Yeah, they both hiking interest rates to try and lower inflation, but who has more room or more wiggle room uh, it is who it is who nakuzan who, 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 who us because labor market is strong demand is still there uh, growth is still there even though it's slowing down but it's not slowing down as sharply as a pound so now i know okay i'm selling a pound i'm buying a dollar so go into a technical chart gbp usd i look for a resistance a strong resistance level or a supply level where I can wait for price to get to. And then I look to sell, or I just look for price to pull back to a resistance or to a support. And I look for confirmation to sell there. That is practical. What I'm doing right now, it's practical. It's just half, half of, yeah, say half, because I haven't really touched that much, much geopoliticals, but it's half of the whole process. But what I'm doing right now, it's the whole process of me from the start to eventually getting to, go to a chart and execute because many a chart in, I now know the direction that I'm looking to execute for that specific currency pair. Don't know if I, if, 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 if I, uh, I make sense there. No, no, you do. You do. Yeah. So it's, it's all part of the process. Then I start from notes. I'm building there. Just that I just went over e, e, e Bank of Japan as well as the e Nakuzan e effect for now but you do the very same thing with all the other central banks read their statements see if the data correlates and then you get your your, your bias or your direction and then you compare one to another you look for the divergence remember that's the most important thing you're looking for that divergence we need to see that split in the direction and then we now have a trade idea 
Is there any geopolitics that support that or that go against the trade? If there are, that support the very same trade even better because we're just building a case. Okay, any, any more questions, suggestions, questions? Uh, if you're good, give me a thumbs up. If you have no questions, give me a thumbs up in the chat. Okay, at least some people are, are still awake. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, guys, uh, yeah, some people are still awake. But yeah, that's 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 it for today's lesson. Um, let's let me see. Uh, maybe not tomorrow. We might have uh, the next lesson. No, I'll keep, I'll keep everyone updated, but probably not tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow. So everyone can have some time to soak in everything and uh, digest everything. And of course, I'll share the link as well. And I'll also uh, yeah, I'll upload it on YouTube as well. So I'll share the link with everyone to the recording and then I'll upload it on YouTube. So once again, thanks everyone uh, for tuning in. Uh, and like I said, for your time, because it might be free, in terms of you didn't pay anything for it, but you paid with your time and time is the most valuable thing. More than any other thing else, uh, you cannot buy more time. So thank you for, your, for giving me your time and actually tuning in and listening. I hope you learned or took away something valuable from it. Or if, it's, if I spoke about something that you already knew, I hope it reinforced that and maybe um, gave you a different uh, or added to, to, to your understanding, right? So yeah, cheers guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Until we meet again uh, and I'll keep everyone updated.